Hi there, this is Sarah Kaiser from the Boo Sewing Center and today I would like to talk about the circular attachment bundle. So I'm sitting in front of the Brother circular attachment bundle. Baby Lock also makes one. Uh, the sewing machine that I'll be demonstrating this on is a Brother Luminaire, uh, but this will work with most Brother and Baby Lock sewing machines and a little later in the video we'll show you how to attach everything. Uh, I'd like to talk about what's in the box because there are a bunch of little pieces. So um, your box will look something similar to this. Um, and inside the box, you will have a set of instructions in several different languages. So it looks like there's a lot of information in here, but there's really just a couple of pages for um, each language. We have a template here. Um, there are some holes along the side here. This will help you draw um, a circle or help you determine the angle of the circle or the degree of the circle that you'll be using. The instructions do give you sort of a mathematical um, way of determining the length of the particular stitch to determine whether or not it's going to work out. Um, from my experience, some of the stitches are going to work well and some of them are not. And my very best suggestion is to just try out um, several different types of stitches to determine which one is going to work best for your project. This piece right here is actually the circular sewing attachment. This is the piece that actually gets um, attached to your machine. And I'll show you that in just a moment. This is the pin that we're going to use to hold the fabric down so that it will actually sew in a circle. Um, and you do get two additional feet. Um, these are different couching feet. Um, this one is like a three hole braiding foot um, and this is a cording foot or a couching foot. There's a little hole in the top here that you can slide some thread through. So those are a few different ways that you can sort of embellish and sew in a circle with um, a lot of fun. And these guys here are the screws that we're going to use to attach the um, attachment to the machine. Um, you will only need one at a time. They do give you two in case you happen to lose one. Um, that is what comes in your box. And in just a moment, we'll show you how to attach it to your machine. Okay, so to attach this to the bed of our machine, we want to pay attention to what it looks like underneath. Um, so I've got a few little notches here and then I've got a little hole over here. So I've taken the ankle off of the machine here so that you can see how this is going to um, lay in the track here. Um, the, the top of my plate here, there is a teeny tiny screw hole. That is what this little hole is going to line up with. So when I get that in place, you can see there's also a couple of little holes in my throat plate. Those little notches, they're going to slip into those little holes. And then I'm just going to line up the little hole here. And then I'm going to use um, whatever screwdriver you have that you prefer to kind of get this started. And then um, you do want to make sure that you have this on secure because otherwise you're going to get a lot of play in your circle while you're stitching. So I am going to tighten this down um, until I stop, until that stops moving basically. So there we go. You can see that it's nice and secure. This piece right here is the part that is going to control the length or the width of my circle that I'm going to be stitching. Um, and this piece right here, um, there is a little bitty, you can see the little rubber cover. That just covers the, the tip of this so that you don't poke yourself. Um, this actually goes right in here and that's what's actually going to hold our fabric in place. So I'm going to place the foot back on the machine here and then we're going to talk about prepping our fabric and get to stitching. All right, so I have my ankle back on my machine. I've chosen to use the open toe foot to start with. Uh, you can pick whichever foot you would like to stitch with. Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you're going to want to prep your fabric. So um, I have starched the fabric and I also have some shape flex on here or some easy tee. So there's 100% woven uh, interfacing on the back of this. When you are doing decorative stitches, 
the fabric is going to want to pull in so you definitely want to make sure that you have it treated so that your stitches actually hold up to whatever it is that you're putting them through. Um, and then I always recommend using a tearaway stabilizer underneath it. Um, the one that I prefer to use for the circular sewing attachment is actually a fusible tearaway. Um, it's stiff and I can fuse it to the fabric which helps prevent any um, pleats and puckers that might happen when you are stitching. Um, you know, when you're stitching in a circle, you are going to be going over top of uh, essentially across the bias portion of the fabric, which tends to be a little stretchier, which can alter the effect of the actual decorative stitch that you're stitching on. So um, I've marked the center of my fabric here. Um, I just used a piece of chalk. You could fold your fabric in half and press it if you would like. Um, I'm just going to poke this piece here through the center of the fabric. And then I am going to sort of roll this up so that I can see underneath it. And basically I'm taking the little point, which is over here, and I'm placing it inside of that little red Y-shaped piece that was there. And then I'm going to push down. So now you can see that I have the actual foot or the attachment attached to my machine. And it is this piece here that's going to allow the fabric to move and pivot. The pieces underneath it that we showed in the previous video, um, right under here, it's kind of hard to see, but this little piece right here will release this so that I can um, adjust the size of my stitch. You could also make some marks on your fabric if you wanted to make sure that you were stitching about, you know, a half an inch or a quarter of an inch or whatever away from your particular decorative stitch. Um, the next thing that we're going to show you is um, some of the decorative stitches that I like to pick. All right, my fabric is all set up. I have made sure that I don't have anything um, that's going to run into the fabric while I'm stitching. Uh, while you're stitching, if your fabric meets any resistance, what's gonna happen is the foot isn't going to feed the fabric through, so you're just gonna basically get stitches on top of stitches. So it's really important to make sure that you don't have anything that the fabric could catch on while it's sewing in its circular motion. So um, I'm going to thread this right up here. Sorry about that. So I just have some regular um, white quilting thread in here. You could use uh, decorative threads, variegated threads, whatever types of threads you would like. When we are selecting stitches, um, it's important to make sure that you select a stitch that does not have multi-motion direction to it. So um, when you are looking at your sewing machine, um, if you have the option of adjusting the width of the stitch, so it's in your utility stitch menu if you were on a fancy machine, um, and it does not have multi-directional stitches, then you should be successful with that stitch. The stitch may not be all that it's cracked up to be, so you may really not like the look of the stitch, but as long as it is going to fall within the standard stitch width of the machine. So this Luminaire or a Solaris or many of the Brother and Baby Lock machines, we have a 7 millimeter wide throat plate opening. So if my stitch is within that 7 millimeters, then this is going to be um, pretty simple. The machine is just going to, the needle's just going to move around and the feet are just going to advance my fabric and it's not going to be any issue whatsoever. If we try to pick one of those stitches that um, on this particular machine has multi uh, motion direction, so sometimes they sound funny while you're actually stitching um, because the feed dogs are moving in a left right motion as opposed to a forward backward motion. Um, then those stitches are often not going to look very well um, because the, the fabric can't actually advance left or right. So I've done a sampling of a bunch of little stitches on here um, that you can see. And again, it's really um, relatively simple. You just need to look for a stitch that's going to give you the look that you're looking for. So I am in the utility stitch menu and I am in menu uh, tab number two. And um, I'm going to select um, stitch number 2-06 
and I'm gonna start stitching. So I'll change the stitches a few times while we're doing this, just so that you can get a look at how the machine actually stitches. But you can see it is advancing the fabric in a circular motion, and that's because I've created essentially a pivot point with this piece. And then you can see the stitches are coming out from the back end there. So you do wanna stitch at like a relatively consistent pace. So I'm gonna just change to a different style of stitch here. And so it will move forward and backwards, but you don't want it to be moving, um, like I said, you don't want the fabric to want to shift in a left-right motion, but forward and backwards is fine. So this is stitch number 2-13. This one is stitch number 2-18. This is one of my favorite stitches. I like the way it looks when it's sewn in a circular motion. have like a square stitch so moving on to menu number three this is 3-08. This is a fun stitch as well. You do have to be careful with this particular stitch. So let me show you what happens when um, it sort of stitches on top of itself. So here you can see they're not, um, it's not really consistent as we're stitching. So um, it's not going to be as pretty as say um, one of these stitches here. So you can see these ones really do a really nice job of creating the different look and the more times the foot needs to go back and forth the more chance that you have for the stitch to not look as even as it did um, at the prior stitch so I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger I'm just sliding that piece out and um, let's pick like this one here is really fun so again we're still in that menu number three but this one doesn't go over top of itself like the previous version did and so you can see it's a really fun stitch it has a lot of really fun movement to it this one is dash three dash two one on this particular machine of course you can just do um like the standard triple stitch. You can also do your standard zigzag stitch. feather stitches so 
So as you can see, using the circular sewing attachment um, is not difficult. The hardest thing is choosing which stitch and which thread you would like to use for the combination stitches. Um, you have a couple of other accessory feet that come with the machine. I'm sorry, that come with the attachment. Uh, these would allow you to do uh, some couching over top of the thread. So you could feed some yarn or uh, different strands of thread through the foot. They just attach um, right underneath these guys here. Uh, and then you would just follow the same, um, the same series of, of events. You just look for a stitch that's going to have a backwards forward motion, left right motion for you, that's gonna cover the stitches and give you the look that you want. Um, when you're using multiple threads and you're sort of couching over top of things, uh, the hardest part is the beginning and the finishing. You do have to figure out what to do with those extra threads. Um, I would typically just feed them underneath the area that I wanna do so that I can kind of lock them underneath the fabric. But this is the circular sewing attachment. Um, again, you just need to make sure that it is attached to your machine. You're going to want to make sure that you have your fabric um, secure and you're going to want to have some sort of a stabilizer underneath it. You can see how easy it would be for the fabric to sort of want to pull in. So the stiffer the fabric, the better the outcome. And um, paying attention to the type of stitches that you use, uh, the more forward backward motion that a stitch does the more likely you are to meet some resistance and if you are stitching and your fabric gets caught on something again it's going to look something similar to this because you're going to have um, some stitches that basically just pile up on top of each other i uh, hope that is helpful and we'll see you again next time bye